Hello, my name is Mei Kwong and I'm the Executive Director at the Center for Connected Health Policy, the National Telehealth Policy Research Center. Today, I'll be talking about recent changes in the DEA regulations regarding prescribing using telehealth and telephone. First off, a few disclaimers. Any information that I provide today should not be considered legal advice. It's only for informational purpose. If you are looking for um, a legal opinion, please seek out legal counsel. And also know if I happen to mention a company or a show or product, know that neither I nor CCHP has any financial interest, arrangement, relationship, or affiliation with such a company. So the Center for Connected Health Policy was established in 2009, and we are a program underneath the Public Health Institute. We became the federally designated National Telehealth Policy Resource Center in 2012, and we've been serving in that capacity ever since. But we also work with a variety of partners on various topics and projects related to connected healthcare. Um, some of these partners include AARP, ASTOS, uh, CoBank, AMCHIP, and the California Healthcare Foundation. Some of the projects CCHP works on are um, a 50-state telehealth policy report where we track all of the 50-state Medicaid policies, laws, and regulations related to telehealth, as well as tracking on the federal level. Uh, we are also the administrator for the National Consortium of Telehealth Resource Centers, and we have a project in California where we convene a diverse group of 70 or more statewide, actually more statewide um, uh, uh, organizations that are interested in telehealth policy. So today what I wanted to cover was actually regarding some recent changes that the DEA made around prescribing controlled substances as it relates to telehealth and, and to telephone. So some of you may be aware that a few weeks ago the DEA uh, approved um, expansion of using telehealth to prescribe a controlled substance. Now, in a pre-COVID-19 environment, when you prescribed using telehealth a controlled substance, you were controlled by what was in federal law. This uh, information or this statute was put into place underneath what's called the Ryan Haid Act. So sometimes you may hear a shorthand when people are talking about the telehealth exceptions to prescribe controlled substances as the Ryan Haid Act. So in that act, there were seven about seven specific types of situations in which telehealth could be used to prescribe a controlled substance without having to see the patient in person first and conduct an in-person exam. And these usually were very um, narrow types of exceptions, such as the patient is in a DEA registered facility or the patient is with a DEA licensed provider during the time of the telehealth interaction. One of the exceptions was if a public health emergency has been declared. Since that was declared earlier in March, that exception went into effect and the EA said, you can use telehealth because in this public emergency, they call it telemedicine underneath the DEA. You can use telehealth in this public emergency to prescribe a controlled substance without having to see a patient in person and have that in-person exam. If, and these are the three items that you need to make sure that you check off, that it's for a legitimate medical purpose, that the telecommunication system used was essentially live video, and also that the practitioner is acting in accordance with applicable state and federal law. So keep in mind, there are some state laws that might have restrictions on using telehealth to prescribe controlled substances that were not waived by this exception that the DEA said is kicking in. So if you are a provider who is prescribing controlled substances into a state, be mindful of what those state requirements and those state laws and regulations do have around using telehealth to prescribe controlled substances. So that's the link to their coronavirus site, and that includes this information where you can like follow up and read a little bit more about that. Now recently what the DEA had issued, and this was in consultation with SAMHSA, is that they are allowing the telephone to be used to prescribe and dispense buprenorphine to new and existing patients who have um, opioid use disorder conditions. So this is extremely different than what we've seen before in that they're 
not only um, allowing telehealth to be used for in place of that in-person exam, they're now saying, well, in this very narrow case of buprenorphine to treat opioid use disorders, we're going to allow the telephone. And they're going to allow it for, for practitioners who are registered with the DEA as an opioid treatment program. And basically, within the program, you need a physician or a primary care physician or authorized healthcare professional who has said that there's an adequate level of evaluation of the patient that can be done by phone. Or you can be a DATA data waivered practitioners. And this is the data waiver is a special registration that you qualify to receive a waiver to dispense buprenorphine for maintenance or detoxifications. Um, this was actually passed a couple of years ago where providers can go through this training in order to like receive this waiver. It does have limitations, I believe, like on the number of patients that you can prescribe to, but it is uh, a, a ability that providers can get in order for them to prescribe um, control, prescribe buprenorphine, that is. So for these two types of providers, DA is saying that you can now use phone in order to prescribe um, for maintenance, and it, it is limited to bu buprenorphine, so it's not all controlled substances, it is buprenorphine, and that is the link where you can read more about that. Other things to be aware um, of is that it can only be done if the valuing practitioner feels like this can be done over the phone. So if there's, there's any doubt that that practitioner doesn't think this is adequate, this phone interaction is adequate, they should not be doing this. Of course, it has to be for a legitimate purpose. And it's interesting in the letter that the DA issued, it's noted at the end that this is a guidance document. So it's not binding on the public and doesn't have, and lacks the force and effect of law. So keep that in mind as well. But that is a dot where you can find the document that is a new policy that's in place. They recognize in this particular crisis that we're in with COVID-19 that providers may need a little bit more flexibility in order to continue to treat their patients for things that are not COVID-19, but are certain health conditions that still need to be addressed for their patients. Also keep in mind, state laws. This is like the same when I was talking about telehealth and also prescribing um, controlled substances through telehealth, that keep in mind state laws may have their own rules and regulations around this and prescribing. So keep in mind um, if you're going into state that the state may have something to say about prescribing using telephone. But as far as the DEA is concerned, if it's buprenorphine, you are treating with um, somebody who is OUD, you are an OTP or a data waiver practitioner, it's okay as long as you know it's for a legitimate medical pr purpose, you feel that you can do the eval over phone, um, and so forth. So here are some links to some of the resources that CCHP has. We are trying to update this as um, timely as possible, so I do suggest that you check back frequently to see if we have made new updates. Also know that we do send out weekly newsletters, and because we are in such an unusual environment, we may send things out a little bit more frequently just as new items come up and news breaks. And that is an info email address that you can like ask your questions to or send your questions into. And I hope this has been helpful. So thank you again for listening to this uh, video. And we hope to see you soon. And everybody, please stay safe.